Right, so here we are, shot on tour of this wonderful lady, Sue Lawson. You might have seen her in such um, uh, children as comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Tom and Shay. Anyway, tell us what you're doing here. It's amazing, by the way. It's all packed now. Um, we're doing people. a timely, informative and engaging event which is looking at energy saving and nature and so when we had a survey so calm without parish council i'm a member of calm without parish council we declared a climate emergency in april 21 2021 and then we set up a, a little working group and then from that working group we thought what can a small rural parish council really do to help the climate emergency and environmental emergencies so we did a survey and we asked our residents and they came back to say to us that they thought household energy and the local environment were things that were important to them so hence this event so we put this event on couldn't be more timely considering the debacle that is going on in the sort of energy world is is that is that is that part of a part of a concern that people have been talking to you as a councillor about this cost of this illusionary cost of living crisis because obviously if it was a crisis they wouldn't be making yeah, profit yeah, on the uh, indeed, indeed. on the energy would they so what's the what's what's your take on that as a yes um people have been talking to us about it which is why we've and we've tried to make it this event really informative so there's a range of stuff for people from Mormon safe wiltshire who are here to help residents on low incomes just to avoid the impact of fuel poverty to people who might be considering about putting in heat pumps or solar panels you know, right. you know so, so we're trying to get a range of different organizations, organizations. so if we go around and just see what the organizations are but if people want to contact you not just from the local environment because it's because all over the place you about uh, different initiatives. Can you give Maya your information so we can do it as a councillor? Yeah. Any other groups? Yeah. Aren't you so, uh, part of the? Um, part of Avon, 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 Avon needs trees. You're okay. seeing the the. Some volunteers. <laughs> listening to me as if anyone's watched to any other other whatever. They watch this one though. Avon, Who's on it? Sue. I'm watching that one. This will be this will be fireworks. Avon needs trees. Avon needs trees. We did oh, a, a podcast on lovely Brilliant. charity who are wanting to plant trees. As you may or may not know, Wiltshire's only got ten percent tree cover compared to England's kind of rate of 13%, we're meant to be getting 17% um, by, um, you know, in terms of government targets. So we've got a long way to go in Wiltshire, and they are a charity who are planting trees and buying land to plant trees so that that land will be protected. So they're an amazing charity. And we're also got Friends of the River Marden here who are, and we're working with them and Brem Zero from Brem Hill to look at the whole of the River Marden, which starts in our parish in Colston, goes through Carl and we're working Brem Hill to make that into a whole blue corridor so that then we can we can support the aquatic and terrestrial biodiversity, get more people out in and being able to access it and just help the river regenerate because some of the rivers needs a little bit of attention. Mm. So you've got it all going on. You've got the yeah. house, the domestic side of it. You've got the natural side of it, how it affects people on a local basis, but how that interacts with everything else. Yeah. Rivers obviously flow from county to county, etc. Yes, et exactly. That's why we're walking, we walking with other people. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. So this is amazing. So listen, there's loads of information. Avon Needs Trees. We've done a podcast before. You haven't seen it. Watch it. It's a really great organization. This is a really great woman. I would like to say thank you on behalf of myself. <laughs> 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 I was about to say my, someone else said yeah, I ain't saying yeah, it, you? Yeah. <laughs> I ain't saying um, it. Anyway, Sue me. Lawson. Yeah, Sue Deedigan actually, Is as well without <laughs> Parish Council. I'd have thought I'd remember. I thought you'd change your name. You might know that, yeah. No, yeah. I thought you'd, you'd yeah. not change it back. No, no, well, only on Facebook. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> so, this is actually Sue Deedigan, I'm shocked. Anyway. I'm so shocked, you've got the same name as me and everything. Yeah. Where'd you get that name from? Uh, <laughs> this is brilliant. Can we just go around and, and film all the different stalls so everyone can get an idea what it is? Yeah. yeah? Thank okay. you over and out from you. this. It's great event. Oh, yeah. This is the value of this land if we turn into cameras. Yeah. Oh, it's funny round. Okay. She mentions it, doesn't she, in the thing? Yeah. Oh, it's just cool. a So basically, what we do is we re. Uh, can I we, film we, you for our we, podcast? Sorry? Can I film you for our podcast? If you would like to. Thank yes. you. Um, Go ahead. So we're Avon Needs Trees. We're a 
a charity that refo reforests land for climate change reasons, for biodiversity reasons, uh, to create nature reserves as well. We've got two, two sites quite local to here, Puddingbrook Wood, which is on Stanley Lane, and our first site, which was Hazeland, which is uh, just sort of between Brem Hill and Studley, really, people don't know. I've never um, been, I love to go there, I've seen um, some photos. This, this, this was, uh, this is ancient woodland here, and these were, these, these bits were woodland, these pastures, but then they were, in the 50s, they were chopped down the farmland, and we bought those, and, and now we're, re, we're replanting the forest where it used to be, basically. Yeah. So, we've got one area here, which is mainly uh, broadleaf trees, and then this area, which is a mixture of broadleaf and shrubs, and things like that mainly, and this area, which has basically just been left naturally to go wild and let nature do what it likes in that area. Yeah. We have um, there's a the water meadow here, which has tremendous amounts of uh, biodiversity and wildlife in it: uh, dragonflies, butterflies, damselflies, slow worms, grass snakes, shrews, all kinds of things. Yeah. Um, and we also have otters on the side. Oh, wow. So, um, oh, how sweet. They've got otters out there. There is no public access. Oh, okay. But we do have days of the year, lots of days mm -hmm. in the year, where we have events where people can come oh, onto amazing. the site. So that we do have public access, but it's strictly controlled. Because yeah, yeah. you've got to be careful, because there is biodiversity, there is a lot of nature going on. We don't want it disturbed, really. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this Puddingbrook Wood was a very different site. That was just a field, and we planted about seven thousand trees and several thousand shrubs in there. In we finished in March, so that is that is actually at the moment a forest of tree guards rather than yeah. a forest of yes. trees. <laughs> um, so all the scouts down there planting them. Up. Yes, yeah. yeah. But we, we've got. Um, they're all they're all biodegradable tree yeah. guards as well. They're made of uh, sucrose, so and you no, can no access this one. You can't. No, there's no oh, public. But yeah. there will there may be in the future. But what we are going to do eventually, we've, we've got all the fencing for it. We just haven't done it yet. Is there's going to be a picnic area just here off the cycle path, so that there'll be notice boards there telling everyone about it, so you'll be able to go in and see it. But there's not because of. Because the trees are small, because of the, yeah. the, there's wildlife and things like that, we don't want dogs in there. We don't want um, yeah. people in there at the moment. Yeah. There's no public, there are no public rights of way through any of the sites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, if if people in the future there may be, but there were, there's we'd rather have people come on days, yeah. days, and have a like have a, a look round. Yeah, and rather than actually have just just general public access. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Right, okay, so here we are at the Lansdowne Hall in Derry Hill. The folks on the hill uh, at the Energy... What's this called today? It's called the Energy something, isn't it? There you go. That guy said it. Now, not only, have we, <laughs> not only is that happening, but this gentleman here... What's your name, sir? I'm Paul from Potton Honey. Paul from Potton Honey. I love it. All this made locally in Potton for, for those people that are watching it outside Wiltshire it's a lovely little village in Wiltshire and these are made from the bees wax how good's that what do you and do you work for this organization yeah <laughs> excellent my, my daughter Katie Katie do you partake of the honey do you, do you, do you like honey yeah. it's really healing as well isn't it it's, it's got healing properties good for hay fever what else is it good for um, you can see got your local flavours, your local pollen yeah. in the yeah. area. You can sample. So what honey you eat in? Yeah. It's from your local beekeeper. Yeah. It's also your local pollination. So, yeah. Do you know uh, there's a guy in in Ireland when we were doing this project in Ireland who said that his daughter had really bad asthma, and she started eating local honey, and never had to take her back to the hospital. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to advocate that just in case end yeah. but it has got amazing it properties. Has yeah, and you're just saying hay fever. Do you not do you not know of anything else? Because we always take it when they've got coughs. 
I well, basically it's good for health with honey and lemon for yeah. obviously cold remedies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I had a customer last week come and buy some honey with a kidney infection, but obviously that's his own personal choice to buy it. Yes. I, I'm not obviously a doctor, I can't yeah, prescribe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's what people buy it for their own personal. Some people buy yeah. it purely for their cereals in the morning, some people like a spoonful of honey in their tea every yeah. day. And yeah, yeah. A bit of both. A bit of, a bit of medication as well. This is great. So is this all you do now for a living? No, no, this is a hobby. Hobby? Hobby strike small business. Yeah. I've got a full-time job. Yeah. And um, I do this in the evenings and weekends with the help of the family. Perfect. So tell me this though, environmentally, biodiverse biodiversity, etc. etc. coming into play. These are major pollinators, bees. What's your what's your experience with illness and, and lack of um, Lack of biodiversity, really. What's your feelings around it? Well, the last few years, obviously, there's been a lot of realization with the lack of pollination. The bees are worrying to climb. But now the farmers are doing their plantation strips when they build their flowers. Yeah. More people have been more aware that the local authorities are not cutting their verges so often. So yeah. you've got the wildflowers, they cut them off, the wildflowers die and go to seed. Yeah. You know, the biodiversity is actually increasing. Yeah. And there's a lot more awareness out there now as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot more beekeepers come online as well. Yeah. You know, since, since lockdown, there's people taking us a little hobby and yeah. project expanding. Everything. So yeah. It's, so how long? Yeah, brilliant. So how long have you been doing it then? Uh, five years now. Five years. Five years yeah. So before lockdown, what what motivated you to do it? Because I've I've always thought about doing. I've always wanted. It's been a childhood dream. Yeah. I grew up in a town where a big honey company, or, or Gale's Honey at the time, based in yeah. Marlborough. I used yeah. to walk past their store every day, where they did the yard. And I used to be sort of fascinated by the soil to see the vans going out loaded of hives in the mornings. Yeah. And I was, it took me just planted the seed. And over the years, I've always wanted to do it. And when I moved to Potter and I had the right garden, I did a introduction course for Kenneth Beekeepers for a year. Yeah. I had a, like a mentor for a year. Yeah. And then I had hive and garden and it expanded from there. And here I am today. Wow. My, wow. So do you ever think you'd do it full time? I'd love to. I'd love to. It's a long term dream, but yeah. one day I will. We've got a shop in Chippenham. Why don't you put it in there? Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's a community shop. Right. With can do arts. So if you look in Emory Gate, I've got a card. I'll give you a card. Okay, good, good. Yeah. I have a card. And just put, put all your information. Are these one that? Okay, Good luck to have you that. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's good. A white show? You want to see? Right. So that's brilliant. So, wait, so the next time you see this geezer, hopefully, we'll be in our shop in the shop in Kandu in Emery Gate. Right, let's just leave this for the time being and then we'll come back Should to it. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get the honey. Okay. Don't I get... We need to get one of these eggs, the Zico eggs, but they're not selling them. I've heard of those before. Huh? I've heard of those. Yeah, there's various other uh, cooking saving ideas. Get your hands in. This is the one that comes with this brand, the standard, right. but that's just got longer handles. And that's what a pressure better. cooker, or is it? Pressure cooker, yeah. So, pressure cooker, uh, it's got slow cooker, you can saute things in it, pressure cook things in it, you can make yogurt in it, you can make rice, rice cooker, porridge maker. Do you use it regularly? Every day. For eight years. You're good at cleaning. <laughs> it doesn't need much cleaning. No. That is so easy to wow. clean. There's another I didn't bring actually, we bought another insert, which is a non-stick one. Yeah. But that one is just never difficult to clean. It just wipes off at the That's end. That's amazing. So it's all important. But does it save a lot of energy? Yeah. 90%. The energy of if you did something on the hob versus that, yeah. and that's 90% more efficient. So you wow. do, we put this out on the podcast. Yeah. Do you yeah, mind? You don't mind us putting this? It's going to go out on Sunday. <laughs> just because this is amazing. What is that? But I'm just a. I'm not you an expert it. in it. I'm no, not no, selling no, the right thing. Yeah, I use this all the time. So I bought it originally about 10 years ago, maybe 12 years ago, as a rice cooker. Yeah. So it was like perfect rice. Yeah. Um, and then I learned you do everything in it. So now we do. This is a dog bowl, just a bog standard dog bowl that fits inside. Uh, it's like a little hack. And these egg cooker, and now I can cook all in one, like a curry underneath. So you can do like a chicken curry, wow. lentil curry, yeah. chickpeas, and your rice in there, and then you put it on for four, done in four minutes. Four minutes. Four minutes. Four minutes. Yeah, four minutes.
eggs under pressure and that will cook the rice perfectly, your chicken wow. will cook through. Yeah. Wow. A bit of time to heat up to get to that point and then four minutes of cooking yeah. and then you can release it. It takes four hours to get to that point but once it's there... <laughs> About yeah, 15 minutes maybe, or, but you're just going to leave it to it at that point, yeah, yeah. so you just going to put it on and then come back whenever. Is you this your it. stuff over here? Yeah, it's so not. You've got the egg, you use it all the time. I don't use it all the time, I say to other people, use it when it's lightly soiled stuff, like right. I tend to use that bio why is that stuff. Then? I don't know why I don't use it very often, I just, I think Covid hit and I was a bit yeah. like, what about bacteria, and I was yeah. a bit went back to detergent, but yeah. um, Amanda uses it all the time and I've got a friend who only uses that now as well, and it yeah. is really good, I just need to remember that, to go back and give it a go again, I think. Cool, cool, wow, well, well done, so you're just volunteering here today? Yeah, well I'm one of the councillors of Calm Without Parish Council, so we put this event on, we have an eco-working group. Um, yeah, no, it's good, it's about time. Yeah, which is what we tried to run. Yeah. this event but we made it more of an energy saving because obviously that matters most to people but that's also obviously yeah. carbon emission reduction yeah well. no no absolutely and about biodiversity and the um, the cost of living to Barkle yeah. isn't that a funny thing are you not intrigued by the sort of cost of power yeah I mean intrigued what? I guess worried yeah. trying to trying to minimise the impact to us yeah. yeah but what do you think what do you think that's about why do you think that's come about? Russia? Ukraine? Do you think? Oh, and the demand after COVID. So, so here's my point though, just on that little bit then. So if it was a big problem, how are they making profit on them? Yeah, so a lot of what you're saying. It's, it's like this. Because some of it's really hard to source, so that's yeah. putting the prices up, and then the really easy to source stuff yeah. just goes, oh, we'll charge that much too. Right, so market. what I'm saying is, you know when it was like owned by us? When it was yeah. national, yeah. do you think it would cost as much if we owned it now? Do you think that we would charge ourselves so much so that some yeah, people so couldn't afford to heat their food? No, yeah. no I'm just saying that in your capacity as a councillor, because obviously you make those decisions on a. No, I think, listen, you've got to be. I think I don't think people should be allowed to be a, a, an MP until they've been a parish councillor, yeah, I mean, or they've been a county councillor, town councillor. I don't think they should be allowed to be an MP if they don't live in the place for more than five years before they try. So they know about it. Our whole system is absolutely... And the, the reason why it costs so much is, no, is nothing really to do with it. Really. Like root cause. If you did the root cause analysis, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. there's other ways to avoid it. Yeah. Oh, 100%. And you just wouldn't make... If it was a desperate situation, no one would make profit at someone else's loss. It's just it's a moral imperative. Thank you for that, then. Cheers. Well, this amazing event's got something for everyone. It's free. Even got free food. Food's amazing. I mean, they have a donations box. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna put a donations box any minute. I'm gonna put some money in there because it's well worth it. But we've got great stuff for all the young people to do. Well done, Abby. We've got talks. Lots of different um, advice stations. Got to really commend Calm Without. And within, everyone's talking to him about the gym. Really good work, it's great to see an active council. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs>